Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about a case study in MAC address spoofing and why it matters. I just wanted to cover a real news story and talk about how MAC addresses are so easy to track and there's various options out there but most of them retain the same OUI. So if we were to see a MAC address that might be 02B4433242 and zero one. So at the first three octets here, they represent the OUI. This is the brand name. It's associated with the brand name. And so if you look up a MAC address, it relies on this first three octets in order to look up what brand name it is. Now the last three are the randomly chosen ones that identify that unique device. So if it is an Apple device with the first three octets and then the remaining serial number here. So a MAC address essentially is a serial number for your network devices in this particular perspective. So we look at it and a lot of different solutions happen to use the same as your real permanent first three octets, your OUI, so that stays identical to your permanent device. Now consider when you travel, and if you are spoofing your MAC address, even with Tails this is the case, they retain the first three octets, the OUI address, and so even if you're spoofing the last three, doesn't it seem like it would be much more trackable to keep your permanent? So how many, you know, even with Apple devices, Android devices, there's so many different OUIs for the same brand name. So even just keeping the OUI, you're going to still have a very unique fingerprint. It's very unlikely you're going to be around anyone with the same first three octets. So... That means that something needs to change, at least in my opinion, and we're going to cover this story and talk about how the individual in this story, even though, you know, obviously I don't support the activity this individual was involved in, but this story just happens to represent some of the top investigators in the world and how even if, say, you're being tracked by a retail store or other commercial purpose for resale, um, it makes sense to spoof your MAC address, but not only that, it makes sense to spoof the OUI. And that's one reason, in fact, this story is one of the things that just knowing about it as a case study, just knowing how this individual who was skilled in computers happened to be tracked by their MAC address. And I'm going to go into that, but the point in this video is to talk about why you should have YPRI installed. Regardless, you know, obviously I assume and only am making these videos for law-abiding individuals, and so with your device it is spitting out all kinds of wireless things along the way, and I've come up with various solutions and I put them into this YPRI command. It also allows you to run it as a system D service. If you run it as a system D service, you can have it mimic a brand of smartphones, or you can have it, so for example, Apple and Samsung OUI, so that first three octets, which is the OUI. Now, even if you use Tails or another privacy operating system, their Mac spoofing relies on retaining your permanent OUI, meaning it's still fingerprinting you. You're still able to be tracked with that permanent OUI because it is highly unlikely anyone within a hundred to a thousand miles of you even will even have the same OUI. That's an issue and that's a big reason that motivated me to create YPRI. Not only that, but with Network Manager, you know there's a MAC address spoofing feature. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Even if you use the Mac Changer option in Network Manager, if you use that one time, there was an actual bug that actually had it set your permanent MAC address. So this was something that I discovered on my own. I wondered why wasn't my MAC address being changed? Why wasn't it being changed? Well, that was because there was a bug that nobody knew about in Network Manager. And so it failed on me that day. And that solution failed on me. That really 
shook me a little bit. Even though, obviously, I'm not doing anything wrong, I still consider the fact that uh, if my permanent, you know, serial numbers of sorts and identifiers are being leaked over the open air, well, then I'm obviously being trackable. And I prefer not to be, just because I can. And that's the whole point in all this privacy stuff in this channel. I enjoy this stuff because I can. And I also really believe in the importance of information and journalism and the ability to share information in a confidential way, which is the root of all our freedom. And privacy is the only right that's able to protect all our other rights. No other right can say that. So when we look at YPRI and some of the features it has, in another instance, you may have to still worry about different types of identifiers. For example, there is a script I wrote called MacTrack. It's a Python script, and what that does is that Python script allows you to sniff all of the local devices that are disconnected from Wi-Fi. So when your device is disconnected from Wi-Fi, it actually is sharing all of your saved SSID lists. So if you have your house saved, your work saved, your college saved, and friends of yours where you use Wi-Fi at their house, any network you've ever saved on your device is being shared with the entire world wirelessly. And so that is another way you can be tracked by Wi-Fi. I've also included a solution for that. So if you want to take advantage of that solution, use the W flag. You can use any combination of flags that you want to use. So when you use the W flag, what that does is it ensures even your saved SSIDs and any other possible identifiers. None of them can be shared after you get seven minutes away from home. So what it does is it actually uses a series of timers and it checks for if you're connected to the internet and the series of timers will check once and if you're not disconnected, if you're connected to an internet and you're once you get disconnected, if that timer can check twice, so it checks about seven minutes the first time, then if you're still disconnected 20 seconds later, it then turns off the Wi-Fi radio. And what that does is that ensures that even if there are other unknown identifiers existing, that your Wi-Fi radio goes completely silent seven minutes after you leave home. So if you forget to turn off Wi-Fi, and that's the solution this flag solves. So if you forget to turn off Wi-Fi, if you have this flag set at boot or just running Wi-Fi as a command, you don't have to install it at boot, which is for system D based Linux operating systems. But if you set it with the W flag, I suggest a combination of the W flag, the lowercase p flag, especially when home, you might want to use the continuously changing at continuously changing randomized times when you leave home. But in general, for my boot flags, I use the W flag to ensure none of my saved SSIDs can ever leak. And then I also have the P flag, which is a static hold on a randomly chosen Apple Samsung smartphone MAC address. And so when you use one of these static flags, it actually keeps a constant eye on your current MAC address. This is also in a reaction to the fact that Network Manager and Mac Changer had leaked my MAC address. So I was concerned about that. So this is a bit of a story about how YPRI came to be and what made me what inspired me to start this? And when I started it, it actually started as a different thing called Mac Cleaner. And later on, I found that there were many other things I could incorporate and help customize by using a flag format instead of an option format. So this is just a bit of a backstory on why I created YPRI. And also, now we're going to go into a story. Another thing I wanted to mention is host names. Just saw that. So with a host name, one thing I recommend is using a generic host name. Something like localhost is extremely generic. And you'll note that I have localhost. In fact, when you used to buy a Linux operating system years and years ago, all of them came 
with the host name localhost. It was only later that they started incorporating more identifiable host names. Anytime you connect to a network, that host name is shared with that network. So at all times, your device is trackable on that network very easily using the host name. And if you happen to use different networks, you move around, you connect to any network, your host name is shared again. That means your location is then shared in you know, relation to that host name and the network. It's because the location of the network is known, and so the location of the computer with that host name or that phone with that host name is known. And so I recommend during off times when you're not using, you could use some of the randomization features for host name. Uh, I don't use them that often, to be honest with you, unless I'm traveling and there's some reason I really want to. Uh, enhance privacy a bit. I may then use the continually changing randomized host name feature or you know you could even have it set to change to a random host name. You can also restore your host name so when YPRI starts it always checks for the saved host name file and then if it doesn't exist it creates it based on your current host name. Now all of that is just so you can restore your host name anytime you want. So it only saves that host name once so it's your real host name and it has it on file that way if you ever need to restore it if you ever mess with any of the host name changing flags you can always restore it later just using that capital R flag so that's another thing I wanted to talk about and then the random signals that came in as well as I was doing things like trilateration and what that is is where you take three different devices I say I have one device here one here and one here and then you are walking around your device is giving off Wi-Fi signals each of those nodes which are the trilateration devices they are picking up that signal strength so it can determine exactly where you're standing just by knowing which which of those nodes you're closest to by judging by that signal strength and so what this experimental feature does is it generates random signal strengths so that way it doesn't interrupt your current connection but it changes the what looks like your distance from that device near it now this can help confuse tracking devices like that and so I even combine them all into the lowercase a flag which is best used as a command it wasn't designed for boot so I said generally the lowercase w flag so my Wi-Fi device turns off anytime I leave home then I also set the lowercase p flag and that just holds on to a static uh, one and then if I'm traveling and I want to incorporate something more continually randomized at randomized times and uh, values well then I'll I'll just simply turn off the service system control stop YPRI and then I'll start up a command with one of the custom flag combinations and you can make those anytime you want it boot you can change those boot flags by just running the install.sh again you can select any combination of flags that you want to start at boot or you can run it anytime you want as a command and just use the flags that way so let's talk a little bit about this story this is a case study uh, this is just an example so this kid just happened to be doing something wrong but we can still use the information behind this story to generate a more private protecting uh, method and so when we look at this we see him bragging about all kinds of stuff and when it comes down to it when you really look into the documents of this article um, we then find out that the individual was tracked they knew he was connecting to Tor and so what they did what it sounds like my interpretation of what they did if you read this uh, they actually found different his MAC address and then they found out which one of his computers was connecting to Tor by using that MAC address this particular case study is just a good example of how your MAC address can be used for more tracking than you may realize. There are things that can read your MAC address from 300 kilometers away. So you may think that it's only something in your general vicinity, but your MAC address could be 
chart like tracked from right where you're at right now by something 300 kilometers away so there could be a giant trilateration of various mesh networks that could be tracking everyone at every moment i did want to share more private thoughts on things like this and just the general you know protection of our security and privacy which is a real human right and its basic dignity you know if you don't have the right to security on your own devices i mean how dignified is that uh, so we see that this individual is using his home network and then he's also as you can see watching the Wi-Fi network which means go back to my tutorial on Kismet K-I-S-M-E-T what I do in that is basically what it appears they did to capture this individual they used a wireless sniffer as it says they were watching the Wi-Fi network and it re revealed the device and I can do the same exact thing if I'm able to connect to your network which appears he had a bad Wi-Fi password um, even if I don't connect to your network I'll be able to see your MAC address at that moment as long as Wi-Fi is on another reason for Y prize W flag turns off Wi-Fi when you're not using it so this story actually inspired a lot of Y prize just in the ethical human rights sense of protecting your privacy and so I wanted to talk a bit about that as you can see they could tell his MacBook's Mac address was connecting to the Tor network so people think that they don't that Mac address spoofing has nothing to do with Tor when really it has a lot to do with Tor as we can see in this particular case study and just another case study on why you should use YPry maybe I'll do some more of these case study videos where I take a real story from real life and then I relate it to one of the tools that I recommend and I'm someone who believes we should use the biggest variety of these networks as we can so for your human rights your safety if you live in a dangerous country uh, using more of these hidden networks is going to make you safer than if you use fewer if you're all in one place you're obviously um, not as safe and so in the context of journalism and traveling to dangerous areas where your work may not be appreciated uh, this makes a good case study and is another reason you should check out YPRI. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on this video. Do you like this kind of video? Do you not? Um, I like to hear your feedback so uh, I look forward to speaking with you soon and I will be back with more on how to protect your security and privacy.